it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And welcome to Fail Friday, the series in which I fix your baking fail, my baking fail, or I tell you how to avoid a fail. And I know a lot of you bakers out there, either just casual bakers or bakers that run your own home bakery or commercial storefronts, you are all getting started on making all of those yummy Christmas items. Now this video today is going to be more so directed at those selling the items, but some of you just hobby bakers might find some useful tips on how to manage your time. And a huge shout out to s and Sweet Treats who actually gave me this video idea. And they are located at, and I might be totally messing up this name, but Woonsocket, I think, Rhode Island in the United States. So thank you to them for the suggestion and thank you for watching. So let's get into it. So a lot of time management stuff actually relies on the planning stages. So you want to make sure that everything is super well planned before you begin executing all of your Christmas baking. So the first thing that I suggest you do is choose some sort of theme that you're going to stay within. Now I know a lot of people are doing classic cookies and different types of boxes, but you might want to choose to do something like a Grinch theme, or maybe you're doing an ornaments theme, or maybe you're doing a hot chocolate bomb box. There's lots of different types of theming that you can do. And the reason that I say doing theme is so important is because this is going to make sure that you have an outline and a guideline to work within. Sometimes if you leave things too open-ended, then you end up doing a bunch of things all over the place. So theming your boxes in whatever way you see fit is really, really going to help you. You're also going to want to limit the variety of options that you're offering. So of course you want to give a good variety within each box that you're creating, or maybe you're just making stock items in general and you're going to sell them from your store or what have you, but you want to make sure that you don't offer too many things. You want to make sure that you keep it to around, I would say, five or six different things. Now, if you're an at-home baker, you're going to do this in a different way. If you sell things out of your home, you don't have a lot of stock items that you just keep on hand all the time. Most likely, you do wait for seasonal times in order to create these stock options. So for you, it's pretty clear. You can either do a small amount or you can do a large amount if you feel you can take on that amount of work. Now, for those of you that actually run a storefront, it's a little bit different because you have to keep your actual stock options that you always have, and you also have to add on a few more Christmas things that you might want to do. So I would recommend keeping it to about five items or so, so that you don't stretch yourself too thin. I also have a feeling that the way 2020 is going, you're going to get a lot of customers during this time because a lot of people's source of happiness are these sweet treats. So it is important that you have things in stock that you can constantly keep in stock and not run out. You want to make this season as profitable as possible for yourself. Tip number four, and this is a big one, you do want to offer pre-orders because what you're doing with all of the scheduling and planning is you're making sure that the workload is spread out. Nothing is worse than trying to bake 60 dozen cookies in a short amount of time. So you do want to make sure that you know kind of what's coming. Offering pre-orders is also a great way to get people excited about your product. And the more that you offer it earlier, I think the better you're going to do because a lot of people will remember, oh, I remember seeing that picture on Instagram where there was a cookie kit that they were offering. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see if they have it. So you do wanna make sure that you get that out super, super quickly. In fact, right now is probably the perfect time. A lot of people are looking for Black Friday sales and sneaking your cookie kits in there or other varieties of cookies and baked goods that you're offering are probably going to do really, really well right now. People are in a shopping mood. So of course, all this talk of scheduling and offering pre-orders brings us to how do we actually execute making all of these baked goods in a timely manner. And this is when your freezer is your best Friend. Now I have done a video where I talk about all of the items that you can make in advance without it wrecking the quality of the food item itself. So you can go ahead and check out that video in the right hand corner. Now specifically talking about Christmas treats, pretty much all cookies do really, really well in the freezer 
even something delicate like macarons. The only cookie that I can actually think of off the top of my head that does not do well are meringue cookies. But you know what? Meringue cookies come together so quickly, so if you did want to offer that in a box, you could definitely whip those up in a timely fashion. Now, some things that you can't really make in advance, but you can kind of do it halfway in advance, are gingerbread houses. So you can bake all of those gingerbread houses in advance and keep that in the freezer. And then when you're ready to assemble, if you are going to be selling assembled and decorated gingerbread houses, you need to make sure that you do that weekly because you want it to be as fresh as possible. And same thing if you're gonna do a gingerbread DIY kit and you're putting it together, highly suggest that you use my gingerbread hack so that you get super, super solid gingerbread houses. You can check that out in the right hand corner as well. Then you have to do that weekly. There are just some things that you can't freeze as is, mostly because you don't have the space, but also sugar doesn't really do well in the freezer in that form. So you definitely wanna make sure that if you're making something like gingerbread houses, that is done the week of. Now, if you do want to offer things that are a little bit different, maybe they have fresh cream with them or what have you, I would definitely keep those items pre-order only. Don't put more stress on yourself. If you're going to make a delicate item like shoe pastry, or if you're going to do something like a cannoli, make sure that you do that for pre-order. You don't have to keep offering that continually, especially if you don't offer that normally. Now, logically, when should you start your baking and preparation? Well, you really should have started yesterday. I'm totally kidding. But seriously, I think that for the most part, when I have done cookie boxes in the past or anything where I was making something large scale or a lot of something, being a one woman show, I did start at least a month in advance from Christmas because some people, you know, at the time when I was doing this did still have things like staff parties. So they did want those things on the ready to go kind of around the December 1st time. So, you know, ordinarily, I think getting started in November is a great way to go because as I said, you can freeze a lot of these items. Those fresher items that you want to offer, you are going to have to bake those much, much closer to the day of actually giving it to them. So what should your actual planning and preparation and baking days look like? Well, you want to make sure that you're being as strategic as possible. For myself, I find what takes the longest is all the cleaning and gathering of things. So I do as much as possible in order to avoid cleaning bowls over and over again. I try to make sure that I plan my recipes in order. So just to give you a really concrete example, let's say if I wanted to offer shortbread and gingerbread and ginger molasses cookies. Well, I'm going to make sure that I do the sugar cookies first because there's no dark color to the sugar cookies. Then I'm going to do the gingerbread rollout cookies next because that needs time to chill. And then I'm going to do my ginger molasses cookies because that is the same color as the gingerbread. So it can come last in case it picks up any of that color. And no, that small amount of residue from each cookie dough is not going to affect the next one. So that's just an example of how I might plan out my day. And I know for myself what my limits are. So I know that baking around three batches of cookies in a day, and by three batches, I mean three different types of cookies, several batches, is probably my limit. So knowing that, I would then work backwards and say, okay, if I'm going to be making 200 cookies during this season, I need to do it as follows. So really, this is a very personal way of planning things, but I mean, if you're the only one doing it, it does need to be something that works for you. Just be smart about it, plan strategically, and I assure you that this is going to alleviate a lot of the Christmas baking stress. So I hope some of those tips will help you plan for your Christmas baking season, and I really, really hope a lot of you are offering some fun stock options at your bakery, whether you're a home bakery or a storefront. I love getting DMs on Instagram, seeing what you guys are doing. A lot of you have shared with me some things that you're doing at your bakeries, and it's just so fun to see. I really love how some of you are taking on some of the ideas you've seen on this channel, or you're coming up with things that are completely unique and just super cute. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys.
Be sure to submit your baking fail and your fail can be fixed by next Friday. Bye.